Hi and welcome to today's live reading from Cade by A.S. Roberts, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue, 11 years ago. Cooey winter, over here, came a loud shout, piercing its way through the gloom of the early morning mist, a mist that appeared to have northwest London in its grip. Shivering slightly, I twisted my head around at the sound of her voice and looked over the top of the rows of cars between us. The drop-off pick-up point at London Heathrow Airport was packed with taxis and loved ones meeting the red eye from Las Vegas. Others, like my mum it appeared, were also taking their chances at not paying for a ticket to the place in the nearby car park. Finally, my eyes swept up and over the shining, well-waxed body of what I convinced was the oldest Rolls Royce in existence to find her warm, smiling face. My eyes met hers and the love that I saw there, and we took each other in for a few seconds, and almost knocked me backwards. Tears pricked the back of my eyes, and I bit down on the side of my tongue in an attempt to stop them spilling out, because well-brought-up young ladies did not show emotion. I could hear my dad's voice inside my head reprimanding me. Taking a steadying breath, I released the handle of one of my cases and lifted a hesitant limb to wave at her. At first my arm was stiff in its wave, but as the corners of her mouth lifted further in greeting to me, my arm reacted of its own accord and began to wave frantically. On instinct and pushing my fears and doubts to one side, I grabbed hold of my second case and began to drag the two between the sea of cars and the tired-looking people. I made my way tentatively nearer, watching her as I propelled myself forward. After looking for oncoming cars, she left the pavement to come and stand in front of my dad's sand and sable coloured pride and joy. As I confidently put one foot in front of the other, I offered her a smile and watched as she reciprocated by blowing me a kiss. My eyes swept up and down the statuesque frame of the only parent who had really put in any effort to raising my brother Rafferty and I. I could see by the clothes she was wearing and the way her beautiful thick blonde hair had been forced and cajoled into a spinster type bun on the back of her head that she was still playing the role my dad had offered to her to cleanse her sins. Some call it love, but I wasn't so sure. She looked every bit the colonel's wife, from her knee-length tweed skirt to the cardigan that had placed around her shoulders. I was their daughter and equally I had a role to play. I had followed his rules up to now and had become the qualified nurse he wanted me to be. But as she engulfed me into her arms and I felt the weight of her burden, I knew I would never be able to fill the boring court shoes he was offering to me. As we pulled apart and she clasped my face gently into her cupped hands, my inherited violet eyes found hers and time slipped away from us as we looked at each other for the first time in over a year. I knew my onlookers would be able to see that we were mother and daughter as we looked so similar, but what strangers couldn't see was my worry. I wondered as we looked deep into each other's eyes if she recognised that I was no longer the daughter that had left to complete her final year of university in the US. Could she see my pain? Could she sense the guilt I knew I shouldn't feel but did? Could she feel that I had changed beyond redemption? I knew that by marrying... My dad, and adhering to his rules, she had atoned for her sins. But I also knew that without a doubt, I never would from mine. Like her, I had fallen in love and lost my virginity to the only man who I would ever let see the real me. Like her, I had then sold myself, and we had both fulfilled the rules we had been given. Her to my dad as a dutiful wife... Me as a submissive to the only man who would ever have the pleasure of controlling me and who still invaded my nightmares. I was 21 years old and I was done. From this day forward, I had sworn to myself that my life would now be mine to control. Cade, 19 years ago. Help! Taking in the scene in front of me, I screamed. My ball raced across her floor as I released it and ran to her aid. Help me! My head shook with the force of the words leaving my lips. Please help me. I wrapped my skinny arms around her and lifted her up as high as I could. Please. My uncontrolled sobs now consumed my vocal cords. 
My shouts and screams were finally answered as I heard my brother shout back to me. What the fuck have you gotten yourself into now? He shouted back from somewhere inside the vast house. We mistakenly called our home. I could hear the laughter in his voice as he probably pictured me holding yet another priceless antique that I'd smashed playing soccer in the mansion we lived in. It's Mama, please hurry up, Nico, please hurry up. I spoke the words between the sobs that forced themselves out of my trembling, terrified body. My legs were beginning to shake, but I wasn't going to let her down. I was her bambino and I refused to allow her to leave me. Please, Mama, don't leave me, please. I spoke to her, hoping she could still hear me. I prayed to her God and I swore to be a better, more loving son. But she was getting heavy in my arms and I couldn't bear to look up because I knew that if I did, I would see the coarse rope be once again biting into her skin. Kate, where the hell are you? Nico questioned me. And I could tell by his tone that he was starting to get worried. Something, call it instinct, was telling him that this time my shouts really were for an emergency. His body, fed by his concern, changed tack. His footsteps started to quicken and they became louder as he came closer to us. Mama's room, I called out, hoping it would reach him as my voice had quietened under my exertions. Through my watery, obscured view, I watched as the door to her room opened gently at first and then as he caught the scene that was unfolding before him, the door opened so fast it crashed into the dresser next to it. Katzo, no, Mama, no, he shouted as he ran further into Mama's room. I felt his arms wrap around her body above mine, and the dead weight I'd been struggling to hold on to was lifted from my grasp. I allowed him to take her weight from me, but gripped hold of her silk robe and watched as my knuckles turned white in my desperation to hold on to her. Let her go, Fratellino. I have her now. His voice was strong and commanding, but also abrupt as he struggled to regain his composure. I can't. It's all my fault, I replied, watching the tears and snot in my face spray as I spoke. Together they mixed, creating tiny droplets that landed onto the blush pink robe she was wearing. This is not your fault. Let her go. He almost whiskered back as he took notice of the distress I was in. Then his voice took a tone I'd never heard before. This is his fault, and one day I will make sure he pays for what he has done. I took a step away to look at the scene I'd walked into and slowly managed to let go of her creased robe before any of our staff arrived and saw my mama's exposed flesh. Picture in front of me was one I knew I would witness all over again every day I closed my eyes forevermore. Dressed in an expensive suit, my large frame brother held up the lifeless form of her beloved mama with one arm as he attempted to release the coarse rope that he had, she had tied around her neck with the other hand. I watched as it took him several attempts to free her from the balustrade of the mezzanine level of her large bedroom. Finally, he succeeded and she was free from the rough abrasion around her, del her delicate skin. As the rope swung freely above her, I looked for any sign of movement from her, even though I knew there would be none. Tears fell from my eyes as the, tiny, the final signs of life left her body. I watched her soul leave her as her face changed and the crushing pain I felt in my chest, I knew I deserved to remember for the rest of my life. My body shook with the shock and with the pain that comes from knowing you will never allow yourself to feel again. Because I was the cause of this. I had made her want to leave us. It was my fault and I knew I would never ever forgive myself. I had been her last hope. But 30 minutes ago when I proudly told her of my father's plans for me, without any consideration for her fears, I had cruelly snatched that dream away. I might as well have put the rope around her neck for her. I sniffed loudly as I attempted to hold back myself in check like the Morello I was. Nico crumped to the floor, still holding her in his arms. A sudden noise took my attention away from them both. His movement had sent a glass bottle spinning over the wooden floor and I watched as the empty bottle of red label vodka came to a complete stop at the floor length drapes. Sighing and shaking my head, I looked back at them both. His overly large frame was now sheltering her petite one. 
Nico moved again as he straightened her robe to cover over her exposed legs, swept her black hair off her forehead and gently closed her still open but no longer seeing eyes. Go and get help, Kate. My eyes shot over to find his as he turned his head away from her to wordlessly ask why I still wasn't moving. Why could he not yet hear the squeak of my sneakers on the heavy polished floor? 911, I managed to question. His eyes found mine. He shook his head and I realised how long, wrong I was. The paramedics and police would never be involved here. Our family, our father would never allow it. With thy thought, I fully understood in an instant just why she had made her final decision. For her, there was no other escape. Reposa in pace, mamma. Pertenonci saranno più i segreti di mantenere. Nico whispered the words of Italian into her ears, telling her to rest in peace and that from now on there would be no more secrets for her to keep. His tears left his face to run down her cheeks and she, as she cried with us both. I'll look after Cade, Mama, I promise. Nico pressed his face tightly to hers as an astonishing cry of pain left his body. My long limbs folded underneath me and I knelt beside them both and took her hand in mine. Then I lifted her hand up slowly and pressed my lips to it, to feel the warmth of her body beginning to leave her. Slowly I realised that my father and the gravitational pull that kept her here on earth, shattered and in pain, had no longer had its claws wrapped around her. For those few minutes, all that mattered were the three of us trapped together in our grief and knowing that she was at last free. After hearing Nico's promise to her, silently I made my own. I'll be good from now on, Mama, and I swear that I will never again let anyone I love be hurt by my father again. <laughs>